Hi everybody, thank you for joining me for this prayerful pause in your day, time to think about something greater than ourselves. For many years, um, and even as a kid, I guess, uh, the word audacious was often used <laughs> around me, and uh, I had to look it up, um, and I was surprised years ago, and I looked it up and made sure that the meaning is still what I had remembered it. There are two different meanings of the word audacious. One is um, that you are showing an, an imprudent lack of respect, or you are impudent, uh, impertinent, insolent, presumptuous, forward. I hope that is not what is pertaining to me most, most of the time, or much of the time. Um, but the other definition is um, showing a willingness to take surprisingly bold risks. I thought about this word because not too long ago, a friend of mine um, who works with the uh, Presbyterian Foundation and has been advising our church on all kinds of matters uh, related to the, the sale of our building and moving forward with the ministry that we're doing now, he has been talking about South Church uh, as an audacious entity uh, when he does his na national conversations with people. So today, when I went to my, uh, you know, readings that I do every morning as part of my meditation, and I ran across this from the Assisi Institute, something you might want to subscribe to. These are all free, um, but the Assisi Institute uh, presents a really interesting take on what current events, whatever's happening now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And for the last several days, it has been using the word audacity as in the audacity of love. And today, um, it begins with these couple of sentences that I want to share with you and, and then chat about them. Uh, today's is uh, titled, Danger and the Audacity of Love. And it begins by saying, if we are going to transmute danger's inherent power into a force for good, we must start with a fundamental truth Everything that exists, including our emotions, is literally a form of energy shaped by intention. Let me read that sentence again, uh, of the truth. Everything that exists, including our emotions, is literally a form of energy shaped by intention. It goes on to say, therefore, if we want to bring good out of this dangerous pandemic we are facing, we have no choice but to be motivated by love. Because only love can transmute darkness into light. Only love can transmute darkness into light. At the end of the reading, it says this, the crucial starting point is this, in order for us to be able to transmute danger into opportunity, we must allow ourselves to be loved by God. We must avail ourselves of God's mercy, kindness, and compassion. We must recognize our God-given goodness. We must also accept our God-given capacity for creativity, generosity, and joy. We must consciously and selflessly exercise our God-given ability to dream dreams of truth, beauty, and goodness, thus celebrating our power to bring order out of chaos. In this spirit, we can move forward. We've been doing a lot of reflecting here uh, over these last many weeks uh, about um, how to live, how to make sense out of what's happening here. I think many of us have found moments where we thrive and don't just survive during the pandemic. We're very privileged in that regard because many of us are able to stay home and to, to practice the social distance 
and the face coverings, and there are many people who can't. And today in the news we're hearing about those who are uh, being discharged from prison because they're low risk and uh, are being sent home uh, for the rest of their sentence so they can be safer from COVID-19. The problem with that is that the criteria used uh, have an inherent racism built into them. Um, the, the qualities, qualifications that are used to determine who is at risk include things like, have you had a steady job? Uh, what was your greatest level of education? Uh, have you ever been arrested before? And we all know that, that those are not equal, um, equally spread across all of the races in this country. And so there is privilege even built into that and deciding who will stay incarcerated where they're likely to catch this potentially fatal disease and who is allowed to go home. So I grieve over those things and I recognize the immense privilege that most of us watching this uh, are able to enjoy simply by having telecommunications and being able to tap into the internet to see this. It's a lot we take for granted. That having been said, this is a time for us now to be shifting our mm, the locus of our thought so that it's not just about now and what is happening now and how do we survive and how do we manage to cobble together a life that has meaning in our current situation, but where are we going next and how do we prepare for that? And you hear businesses talking about how to open up and churches having conversations about how to, uh, again, welcome people in their sanctuaries, um, if they have one, unlike South. Um, it's time for us individually to be thinking about our world and what's that going to be like when we open up, when we are allowed to move beyond this COVID time, which may not be uh, wholeheartedly possible for another several years. So we have to face that too. However, I think that these readings call to mind that we have to be audacious in our um, co-creating with God, audacious in uh, our owning our creativity, audacious in um, daring to dream and daring to hope and to plan. Because remember, the two definitions of audacious, well, the one is really not having respect that we should have, but the other is showing a willingness to take surprisingly bold risks. We need to be surprisingly bold in how we dream our future. What is it that we want our community, our churches, our nation, our world to be like? If we were starting from scratch, just imagine this, this is the assignment for the day. If you were starting from scratch to create the world as you want it to be, as you believe it should be, not could, don't get bogged down in what's possible and what isn't. Just blue sky dream this for a little bit. For some of us, we would call it the KOG, the kingdom of God. But whether you use that terminology or not, what is it? What is your vision as you start with nothing there, no no preconceived ideas, no concepts that we have to employ. What would you want the world to look like? Because the way to get to that is freeing up ourselves from fear, from anger, from all of the negative things that come and hold us down saying that can never happen. It's by taking those off and saying, with God, all things are possible. And by spending time thinking about that and beginning to construct, this will be an ongoing exercise. It's not a one-shot deal. By beginning to construct what we want things to be like, we start to send out those energy waves, if you will. If we talk with someone else about it, then those words carry the energy with them. If we write about them, if we are just thinking and praying about them, there's we begin to align our energies together. We can make something better, something different. 
But we have to be audacious enough, bold enough to step out in love and begin doing that. And there's no time like now, because what else are you going to do during your day, right? So I invite you today to be thinking about that, and probably I'll come back to it, if not tomorrow, in the next next week sometime, uh, to see how you're doing. What is it? Talk it over with family and friends, whoever is around you, or on the phone even, or on Zoom, or whatever platform you're using to connect with people. What do you want this place to look like? And there can be no naysayers. There can be no judges, and there can be no yeah buts. Yeah, good idea, but. No, no, none of that. This is just putting it out there, creating pure thought, being audacious in planning our future. Okay? I think that's enough, more than enough, to think about for today. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. I'm Pastor Deb Swift. I'm Pastor of South Presbyterian Church in Rochester, New York, and you've been engaging in a prayerful pause with the pastor. If you'd like to learn more about South Church and our Acts of Faith ministry and how we are becoming really a truly virtual church uh, during this COVID time, I invite you to visit our website, which is on the end slide, or go to where you found this video and find the rest of our videos, which is our YouTube channel, South Church Rochester. South Church, Rochester. We'll see you again next time. Be safe. Keep the faith or find the faith or think about the faith or develop the faith, whatever it is you need to do for where you are on your journey. There's a home for you here. And God is good all the time. All right. Go. Have a great day. See you next time. Bye for now.